Hello folks, Jonathan Milam here with a Canstel made Besson International Trumpet. If you can see that there. I have had probably uh, four or five of the Stam horns and that was a Boosian Hawks uh, made instrument. Uh, they contracted Canstel to make it and they had the marvelous Marvin Stam kind of uh, intercede on their behalf to make sure that the uh, horn met his quality specs. Very, to my way of thinking, uh, Marvin Stam is not only a tremendous trumpeter, but also a very gracious individual. I actually emailed him one time, I've got a question about this horn. I call it the Stam horn, and he said it's a boozy and a hawk's horn, and uh, can still made it. But it was uh, very... Um, uh, proper in his material. In fact, he emailed me back. He was in, I believe he was vacationing in Italy and uh, something about going out for a run, he'd finish up later. Very, very uh, fine fellow. And you can find a lot of his um, playing with that, what I call the uh, stam horn, uh, can still made. Anyway, this horn shares a lot of the characteristics of the stam horn, but this was made to be an intermediate horn. Um, very rarely, but occasionally, you'll find a company that kind of overshoots their goal, and a lot of people rave about this Besson International. I've tried to get one for some time, several different times, just never worked out. Now this horn has been uh, probably, I know it was used by a school student, I'm going to guess that he marched with it. Um, I'm a little disappointed he hasn't dented the third slide. Everything else has a ding on it. The lead pipe has got one or two nice little dings, you know, uh, that kind of thing. You see one, where was it? Oh, yeah, there we go. On the uh, first slide, of course, the second slide has got one. Um, valves are very fast, fairly firm. And um, actually, not as loud as a Strad, but uh, not the quietest things I've ever seen. Does have a third slide stop here, and um, good, uh, very good compression. Very good. I usually lube my uh, first and third slides up pretty much with a uh, heavy, heavy cream. Um, I think the silver on this, you'd say it's a hundred percent, I believe, but it does have a good number of scrapes. I don't know if you can see that here along the, um, the slide. I live in Charleston, South Carolina, close to a million people in this area. We do not have a shop. They ship everything out, and I just like to be able to look someone in the eye where they're gonna be working on a horn of mine. Uh, I think $100 worth of dent work from a good dent man, and this horn would look um, pretty impressive, pretty impressive. As it is, lots of little dings. But, uh, oh, also, when I was taking it apart, weighted valve stems. Who would have guessed? They just did not cheap out on this horn at all. Um, very nice player. Uh, it's not the... Now, I want to be careful how I say that, this. Um, it has a very compact projection. I was thinking, after I picked it up a little bit, I was thinking, man, I bet some lead players would go crazy over this thing. And then I thought, you know, a student would be able to get out a really uh, very impressive sound. It's just, it's an efficiently um, organized instrument. And I, I am of the belief that uh, two horns can come off right next to each other and play differently. But my impression of this is it is an efficient uh, sounding horn. Okay, we'll get right to it. I'm going to be playing, uh, I think we're going to do uh, Wouldn't That Be Lovely. Um, I'm using a GR64MB. It's actually a little deeper than a 3C that I've got here. Who knew? I used to like shallow pieces and now I'm going a little bit more legit in my dotage. <laughs> Okay.
okay, that was not, wouldn't it be, uh, wouldn't it be lovely? But um, I'm going to start off with the 64 MB. I'm going to go to two deeper mouthpieces. Then I'm going to go to a shallower one, and we'll try and give you a long tone on each of them so you can uh, get an idea what it sounds like with that mouthpiece. Just sounds like a trumpet should, doesn't it? Okay, next uh, one that I'm going to go to, it's again, it's a GR, but this is their, oh, what do they call that? FD, Flugel Deep. Actually, a uh, Flugel mouthpiece for the Con Vintage one, but somehow they worked it out so that it fits a trumpet receiver as well. If you want a deep, mellow sound, this is what you'd get with the um, GRM or uh, FD, Flugel Deep. Okay, now um, I've always liked the Curry Vintage Cornet mouthpiece. The only thing is it's hard to play a Cornet mouthpiece with a trumpet, unless you've got an adapter. I got a GR adapter. This gives a little bit breathier tone and um, uh, I was there for a while when I was making videos I played so much Summertime by Gershwin and of course uh, Chet uh, Baker used to do that a whole lot and somebody said it's Chet Milam and I got the biggest kick out of that But uh, a little bit different sound than the um, deep flugel mouthpiece and we'll just play summertime Okay, the last uh, mouthpiece I'll use with this is about as close as I can come to a lead mouthpiece. It's really not a lead mouthpiece, it's maybe commercial. But it is the um, GR64 Medium Shallow. And uh, nice mouthpiece, very nice mouthpiece. Um, I'll probably play a bouncy old church uh, verse on this just to kind of try and highlight the attributes of this mouthpiece.
Okay, Canstell's Besson International. Perhaps an intermediate horn, perhaps with a professional sound. As always, thanks for tuning in. Hope things are going well. Take care of yourself and someone near you.